borders. Now, I'm not talking about the arbitrary borders that separate different geographic land masses between countries. No, I'm talking about the borders that are fine, we find in your UI designs. And some of you, unfortunately, just butcher them. I see them on my live UI UX review shows. You're just way over using them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three different examples. And these are real examples that people have submitted from uh, my Discord server. And I'm going to systematically deconstruct them, remove the borders, and you're going to see how significantly better they are. Now, I'm not saying you can't ever use borders. In fact, I think borders can be a great addition, but only if you're using them correctly and also applying them in a modern context. All right, so I'm going to also show you a bunch of examples from dribble.com with great UI designs that have integrated borders in a way that really makes sense. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, as a front-end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with the free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so here is our very first example where I'm going to deconstruct a little bit and show you how, you know, we can remove these borders and it's going to really translate into a much, much better UI design. So looking at this, uh, we can see we have thick borders underneath underneath each of the headings like social network, languages, experience, skills, etc. They are really thick and they're also highly, the most contrast you can have, 100% black versus 100% white. Uh, we also have secondary borders that are dashed in between each of these sections. And I would say it's just too much. Uh, there's not a lot of white space separating these sections already. So when you have these borders added in, it adds a lot of clutter. So let's see how we can uh, eventually just improve this um, as we go on slide through, through slide. So first thing we're going to do is get rid of those. And as you can see already, there's a big improvement. So if I show you the previous slide and we click on this, it looks a degree better in my opinion because we don't need those big, thick, bold borders. We understand that based on what's called visual hierarchy, the the establishment of this real thick heading right here, this type, this information goes with this heading right here. So we don't have to have this 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 big thick underline like we have right here. Now we can also get rid of this dashed border right here. All right? So you can see it just disappeared. So we're going from this to this and it, we don't need that border to say that this element here is separate from this el element simply because the white space between these elements does that for us, if that makes sense. So if we already have something that's signifying that these are, you know, repeating items and they're two distinct different items, then why would we add unnecessary visual clutter that distracts and takes away from the content right here, which is most important. It's type-based, right? All right, so still though, this isn't that great because there's not a lot of white space separating the different sections vertically. So we have this little amount here, uh, and then this little amount, and so they're kind of still just run together. So let's uh, restart from scratch, and then you're gonna see in the next slide, what I would do in terms of spacing them out a little bit more. It's gonna shrink the whole you know, presentation a little bit, but you'll still see the increased separation and it makes it just easier to see each section under each heading. So now we have a lot more in between each one of these, as you can see. And this is what I would personally do if I were working with this layout and only having to adjust certain things like white space and 
removing borders and such. So we're going uh, from that to this, which is much more increased in terms of white space and it makes it easier, like I said, to really just scan each of these sections. And ultimately we're going from the very beginning one here to this one. So as you can see, if we go back and forth, you can see how much cleaner and more effective and easier it is to read and use between these two sections. So now I, I accidentally <laughs> skipped ahead in a second. Here's our second demonstration. So this is an easy way to make voiceover. So it's some sort of a uh, system where you enter this text area and you hit play and it makes a voiceover or something like that. I'm not sure. Anyhow, we could see that we have borders around the main container right here. It's a very light border, but nonetheless, it is a border. We have a, a thicker, dark, maybe it's just not thicker, but it's a darker border around the text area right here. We have real thick, quite bold borders around these very large buttons, way too large in my opinion, for the play, stop, and download. And we also have borders around the drop, you know, the, the, the drop down menus. Don't need any of those. So let's see how we can improve this significantly. So we're gonna hit play, click through this, and now the first thing I'm doing is just I'm creating a big container. It's actually a darker background color than the original because once we lose that border, it would be kind of hard to see the difference between this element. So if you look back here, this is real light. I'm making it a little bit darker because like I said, we're gonna lose this border, which reinforces the container. So we're making this just a little bit darker. Um, next up, the play, you know, the, the actual um, action buttons. We could see that this one has no border. We don't need one. If we go back here, look how thick these borders are. And along with the gloss effect, it's just adding a lot of unnecessary visual clutter that ultimately it, 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 it brings you back to an earlier time in web design where gloss and all that was really rampant, especially Apple was using it, iOS and everything. Uh, you, you also want to stay away from old trends that were clearly trends just for a short amount of time, uh, which is what a trend is essentially. Um, so here I have very simple. I realized that this is probably a little bit too desaturated or too low contrast, so I fixed that. So now we bring back uh, or we add in the four different drop down menus. Again, I don't have any borders here, but yet you can clearly see that these are drop down menus. Um, and there's also good white space between each one of them. It also fills out the area more. So if we go back here to the original, we can see these are all clumped together, not much white space. Uh, we have centered labels here. We have the borders here still, all of these borders. And ultimately we go from this, which is, well, well, rather we go to this, but just take a look at how simple all of this is compared to the visual clutter here, which is mainly reinforced by the borders. So the borders aren't the only thing that was wrong, right? Like scale right here, these are way too big. I fixed that. I fixed the white space between this and the alignment. So there's a lot that goes into really revamping a design like this, which has multiple issues. Uh, but I would say the borders are probably the biggest issue that adds a lot of unnecessary clutter and just kind of just makes it ultimately look amateur. All right, so the next one is right here. So this one, very colorful. I actually like the colors and the color scheme. I also like the headers and the topography up here. Um, a little bit off here. We have this amount of white space here and then we have a massive amount of white space here. Not a fan of that, but nonetheless, I like the font. Um, I like the colors. The one thing that I really don't like is all of the thick borders going all over the place. So we have a border coming from this illustration, this one. I understand there was an idea behind it, but look at this. I mean, we have three borders around each of the buttons. So we have six borders in close proximity. And not only are they bold, but they are also different colors. So there's a lot of unnecessary visual clutter here. Let's see how we can try to maintain as much as this UI design as possible in the illustration right here, but also just improve upon it, mainly in terms of getting rid of the borders. So first up, we're just gonna keep the header as it is. Next up, we're gonna have our illustration. I would improve the illustration personally. It seems like a little bit, um, it's off aspect. I, nonetheless, we're gonna keep it though. Um, I move it down just slightly and then I'll move it again as you see in a second. But as you can see our headline right here, it has room to breathe. 
I always say that room to breathe, and that just means it has a lot of white space around it and there's no other elements near it. Now you could have other elements around it or behind it as long as they're watermark, or in other words, very low contrast, uh, but there's nothing high contrast around your type, especially your headline. You shouldn't have high contrast elements near or behind or on top of your very important type-based elements like your headline because it makes it hard for people to read and it also makes it hard for people to locate if their attention is focused on some other area. So I see a lot of people get this wrong like when they have like a, a photograph background and they don't create enough contrast between the type that's sitting on top of it and you know the background element itself. So right here, this has so much room to breathe. It's, it's, it's a white background with black text. That's the maximum contrast you can have. So easy to read and it just looks good as well. Um, let's click on here and then we're gonna add in the, the buttons. So if I go back a few slides, we're gonna see the original. The buttons right here, they have an issue of scale as well. Just like in the other example, the previous example with the play, stop and download button, we have this scale button, these are just way too large. But other than that, the borders are gone in my case. So we have the, uh, this one. We do have actually a border right here, the secondary border for the secondary button right here. I failed to change the text, but forget that. Uh, what's happening here is you can still use borders in your UI design. And this is one of a, a great use case. I'm going to show you some other more effective approaches here in a second. But this is a great use case. It's low contrast. It's not something that uh, really sticks out and distracts. Notice that the, the type in itself, your, your eye is automatically drawn to this. But you can still see it's a button. And it just it, it creates kind of like a, a, continue, a continuation of this button style over here. But in a very subtle manner and is done through a border. All right, so we're going from this to this, which I personally feel is a lot better. Sorry, I'm getting rid of that. So again, from this to this, and I hope we, we can all agree that it's just much easier it, uh, to read and use, and it's also just looks better and less, I, I guess you could say, I uh, less amateur. So with that said, let's go ahead now and take a look at what I personally feel are some great use cases for modern borders, all right? And there's a different use cases for them. So you don't have to completely discard your use of having lines in certain areas of your UI design. It's just knowing how to use them correctly. And hopefully I'll give you enough examples to give you your inspiration and the knowledge to know how to go forward with your own design. So let's go ahead and check some out. These are all from dribble.com, D-R-I-B-B-L-E.com. It's a great site to check out designs in general, UI designs as well. So we can see right here, we have, uh, let me make this a little bit larger. You could see there's some very thin, low contrast borders. And this is a great use case for this. I, you can have borders in your design still, and this, this is more of like a, a more of an artsy approach to it. And they work because they're very low contrast. All right, they're not thick and bold and high contrast like white. If they were thick, like maybe like 10 pixels thick in 100% white, it would look really weird. But because they're more of a watermark element, they work fine. So if you're gonna use a border in this context, make sure it's almost like a watermark, it's not high contrast. Next up, we have a border right here. Now, these a lot of these are animated these days uh, on Dribbble, but we can see there's a border next to each one of these buttons. A very simple border, very thin. It works well. They're not overusing borders all over the place. Here's a border. Here's a border. There's a border down there. There's a lot of white space. All the other UI design fundamentals are working well for this design. So it still works. You can still use borders. Next up, we have a border right here. This is one of those areas where you have like a sentence or perhaps a, uh, a paragraph of text where you want to indent it in order to shift focus, focus to it. You can have a border right here. This is like two or three or four pixels long. Uh, it's reinforcing a secondary uh, color here. That works just fine. It's a, it's, it's, it's a small vertical border, 100% works. 
Next up, borders are also popular and I think work very well when you're dealing with menus, both vertical and horizontal. So we have a, a vertical menu right here and you simply have a kind of desaturated line going all the way through and then depending on which one is currently being you know designated, which page or whatever, it's being highlighted as well. Again, it's a minimal usage of borders, like having a border around this thing and then this thing, that would be way too much. But again, this is very minimal usage. So when it comes to border, borders, minimum is best or minimal. So let's check out this one. Ha, what is this one? Okay, that may, must have been an accident because this is not a UI design. What are you thinking, Gary? Okay, let's look at this one, for instance. Um, this is another one of those animated ones. So we can have a border right here. So borders are really effective and they and it's a really modern trend when you have like a um, a heading where you have a little line that separates it from the rest of the, con the content. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to go about that. This is just one such way up there and that works well, I like it. Now this one's a little bit more heavy usage on the borders here, but it's not insane. I mean, we have a border around this top portion. We have a border underneath the learn more and then a border separating these two elements right here. It's still effective in my opinion. I like it a lot. They're not overusing it to the point at which it looks like garbage. And also something that also helps the design overall is it's really classy and they're really nailing the UI design fundamentals from everything else very well. The topography, white space, color and contrast, relevance to, you know, et cetera. Here's another one. Uh, this is another uh, example of a headline of sorts using a border effect. Before the one, a couple that we saw a few back, uh, there was one underlined, underlined underneath it. This one is just off to the left. I like it, it works well. All right, so this one is a little bit more heavy on the borders, depending on which screen you're looking at. We have a very light border right here, but it works. It, why? Because it's one pixel thick, sorry, I hit my microphone, and it's also very low contrast. Now, I also completely think it's fine as a visual indicator on which page you are in the navigation to have them thicker and perhaps based on the current primary color thing, uh, scheme or primary color rather as a part of the color scheme. Um, we have very thin borders separating out some of the, air, the information and tables. So if you have table-based data, you can use borders. You don't have to, but you can, but make them very low contrast and uh, not high contrast. Here's another example. We have, I, once we get rid of this little screen, these separators right here, you can completely do that. Very low contrast, like I said, not very thick. And then the one that's designated is obviously higher contrast and thicker with the primary color as a part of the color scheme. And it just works very well. All right, everybody, hopefully you now understand how to properly apply borders. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.